Cancerian Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your timeless work, career, and vocation reading. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons. Mal, for short, they're my initials. Professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998. Can you dig it? Author of Words of Grace from a professional witch available on Kindle. Link in the description box. Yeah, I wrote a book and I may write another one. I don't know yet. But you know, one thing I am, I am a creator on Patreon, patreon.com slash drawing the circle. I love it over there. Best career move I ever made. Appropriate for these readings. I'm allowed to say that anyway. I'm the director. Uh, <laughs> because I'm the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lions. But you can call me Mal. Hey, my crab cakes. Hi. I just got off a good half hour to 45 minute video call with a lovely Cancerian, dear, dear soulmate friend of mine, Lillian Carter. I talk about her a lot. We used to live in a studio apartment on the Fenway in Boston in the 80s. <laughs> you get to know each other. Cancer and Virgo. I'm Virgo sun sign. Very, very good mix. Uh, cardinal uh, water and mutable earth. We, we, it's like no time has passed. Love her so much. And she's a filmmaker and a choreographer. So it's just funny that I got the best prep ever uh, for this reading, talking to a cancer. And what were we talking about? Work, career, and vocation. Uh, synchronicities, unity, blah, blah, blah. So uh, let's uh, do this. If you're new to the channel, uh, work, career, vocation read is really what, what I call a three levels of power uh, reading. There are links in the description box, a little section for videos pertinent to the subject matter. Uh, a video by Carolyn Mace, a lecture, M-Y-S-S, uh, but she's a PhD. These are her archetype cards, first three cards down for the read, uh, talking about the three levels of power, an archetypal set of lenses that you can look at lots of different areas of your life. In this case, we're looking at life purpose, bringing together your work, your career, and your vocation, the literal level of power, the personal level of power, the symbolic level of power. Uh, Caroline will explain the rest to you. We don't have time for that here, uh, but do go check it out. I highly recommend it. Her, her work has been so uh, revolutionary to my spiritual growth and healing in all sorts of different ways. So, uh, yeah, so it's a 12 card spread. General read, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Oh, and before I forget, because uh, just to entertain myself and be creative about it, the theme for this series of timeless uh, work, career, vocation readings, it's the theme is just for the job you want. So essentially, I want to be Bombshell Wonder Woman. And I'm okay with that. You know, it's all blue, right? I always try and match the elemental color, fire, earth, air, and water. Anyway, that being said, um, <coughs> um, do check your other signs because your sun sign might be more focused on work, first level of power. Your moon, possibly on your career, your vocation, your, your rising, your Venus, to get different aspects, right? So you can find your leverage. Usually one of these three levels shows you where the leverage is. Tinker with one just a little bit sometimes, and the other two will line up as well. There are chakras involved. Uh, we'll get there. Uh, so let's see what flies out of my mouth, shall we? Both feet on the floor, if you can. Focus on your breath, if you will. I'm slowly turning into Natasha Leone in Russian Doll. <laughs> slowly morphing. Uh, both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath if you will. Uh, and I will get you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can from my beloved crab cakes. My mom, well, I got a lot of crabs in my life. Lifetime case of crabs. Please take a nice deep breath. Ah, from divination. Uh, from explanation to divination. Still point. Here we go. You catch that little bit of a whiff, and then the signal comes in. I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine, the guides, masters, teachers, gods, goddesses, saints, angels, totems, healers, ancestors, and higher selves, all the way back to unity for the Cancerian Collective. Sun, moon, rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading for their work, career, and vocation, please, using the Caroline Mace archetype deck. I need the dominant eighth chakra archetypes hovering over their head, but one containing their work, one career, one vocation uh, for this timeless read. So the eighth chakra dynamic, the soul power being developed 
being beamed down to all the other chakras, right? Affecting what they attract and what they repel and what they experience. Uh, so for their work, first level of power, survival intuition, how they survive in the world, lower three chakra dominant, but what's the eighth chakra uh, doing above that, affecting that for their career? Second level of power, personal level of power, their creative intuition. Uh, uh, definitely crown, third eye, throat, and heart, their feminine energy, their internal world, their career, what they hunger and thirst for, what they burn for, what they yearn for, what's going on there. Eighth chakra, and for their vocation, their spiritual calling, right? Their, their spiritual mental, uh, yeah, but it's spiritual mystical, right? Uh, the star that they follow that calls them forth. Eighth chakra dominant, visionary intuition. These are in the title in a weird, timey-wimey way. You know them before I do. Let's see how brave y'all are. Oh my god, I got the hermit, the hermit crab. Ah, work. Ah, networker in your career. And Samaritan in your vocation. Come on, Samaritan. That's like, that's like scriptural. It's like biblical. So we have a wisdom family archetype, a creative family archetype. Makes sense. Good. And your creative intuition and uh, a divine family archetype in your vocation. Work. Okay. So um, we're going to read these in the opposite direction that I put them down because we're going to start at that eighth chakra from the point of view of your vocation, your calling, right? Your spiritual stuff, <laughs> what you came in to do. Because on a serious note, <clears throat> well aware of what's going on on planet Earth. Right? War, well, there's always been war on the planet, but, but this is nuts what's going on, right? School shootings, it seems like every other day, again, right? right? Corruption, Roe versus Wade is up in the air, right? It's a lot, it's a lot. So I don't have that much political or financial power to shift that kind of stuff, if you know what I'm saying. I'm 53 years old, Thorpe, yeah, I know I don't look at things, Thorpe. Um, but what I can do is fulfill what I came here to do, my life purpose, because that's what keeps this planet turning. As long as there are people who are fulfilling their life purpose deliberately, they are contributing to the universe's plan. And the universe always has a plan, no matter how crazy shit seems. That's part of the plan, too. Long story, don't ask me to explain it, we're looking at you. So, uh, uh, I'm digging this for you. Starting from the 8th chakra, working down the Samaritan. Really, someone from Samara, if you have an appointment in Samara. <laughs> if you know the story, if you don't, I'm so sorry. No, I'm not. Shadow attribute. The shadow's what you're trying to heal here in your vocation. Not just for yourself, but for everybody. Right? So if you don't want to look at, don't want to look at, right? Or if you know about it, nobody's supposed to know about it, right? The shadow, the lead, the pain, uh, exacting appreciation and recognition for the help you offer. Exacting it. Not wanting it, not expecting it. Exacting it. You ever been around an exacting person for more than five seconds? <laughs> They're not fun. <laughs> Makes me want to go to that realm of spells I've been trained in that I have, uh, I've eschewed such behavior. Is in tight. The light that you are shooting for, the light attribute, refines your capacity to help those you would prefer to ignore. Boy, is that a big list for me. I would prefer to ignore them. But you know what? That's the alchemy from lead to gold. That's really powerful for... This is definitely someone who can help. And with divine spiritual power pulling them forward, that's great. But then we've got it, the creative archetype in your career, the networker, and who the hell isn't networking? If you're of a certain age, you know what a networking meeting is? Coffee urns and little pin on bed, hello, my name is. Never again. <coughs> Never again, the networking meeting. Everything's digital anyway. And if I gotta wear a mask, it's gotta match what I'm wearing. Uh, uh, the shadow attribute here of the networker, uh, see if this rings any bells in society, conveys information only for personal gain, spreads fear and falsehood, essentially fake news. So look, you clean that up in yourself, in your career, you're cleaning that up for everything. Work. The light attribute you're shooting for enhances unity, U-N-I-T-Y. I don't know who made Latifah queen, but I'm glad they did. Uh, enhances unity through the sharing of information, engenders social awareness, 
and empathy. Make your career about that for a bit, if not for the rest of your life, right? Really get into that. We're looking very third chakra dynamic here, right? How you communicate, unity, awareness, and empathy. Now, if you're an empath, a vibrational, energy-sensitive being, most Cancerians are, grew up with one you would never know, though, because my mom's a queen. <laughs> never know. Elbow, elbow, wrist, 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 but Italian, so really good food. <laughs> British stuff, no offense. Uh, 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 really, this is a huge opportunity. This is a huge opportunity for you to actually be more than a vibrational empath, but actually to use your creativity in a way that unites people so that people can feel each other. If you are an artist in any way, shape, or form, even in how you uh, keep your own house, how you decorate it, because that's a Cancerian's niche, right? Fourth house, house and home. Uh, this is really, really beautiful. This is really, really beautiful. Moving on, though. You hermit crabs. Work right now. If you're working from home, that's the gig for you. But let's look at the shadow. I have the hermit archetype. You can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Doesn't matter. You know, this may be for a reason can be a day, right? A season can be 10 years out of a life, uh, lifetime. The seasons of our lives. We had joy. We had fun. We had seasons in the sun. What a fucking depressing song. Um... Uh, 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 but some of us have it <laughs> lifelong, I kind of do. Now, the shadow attribute withdraws from society out of fear or negative judgments of others, refusing to help those in need. Do you see the resonance between what's going on in your vocation and what's going on in your work? It's practically a direct line and how you communicate it is key. This might be your leverage. Uh, 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 but withdraws out of society. So let's put that, take it out of society and put it in work. Withdrawing from the work. It's like, I'm, I don't like these people. Now, there is a difference between a judgment and a discernment. Usually the discernment is wrapped up in a judgment. Right, so like screw her, rush her, fresh her, rush her, rigger, rigger, right? Some dastardly and mutley vibe there. If you're of the right age, Generation X, yo, yo, lamb tan. You only live as many times as necessary. Uh, then feel that. Allow yourself to feel that. Don't communicate that, but allow yourself to feel it, because that's the lead veneer. Uh, with a nice gold nugget of intuitive discernment underneath it. So what are you shooting for in the light? Seeks solitude to focus intently on inner life. Serves personal creativity, creative archetype, in the personal level of power. That's why I make the big bucks free here on YouTube. All right. That's as much of any of the cards, as long as uh, we're going to talk about it, any of the cards. All of the rest of this is really flow, as the next two decks shall be tarot. Fuck, I'm rhyming. The gods are in the room. They always are. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. Here we go. I call upon my goddesses of water. <laughs> oh, the sign of cancer. Powers of the West, please. Three cards in clarity. Heart, throat, third eye, crown, dynamic. We started with the eighth. What are the next four underneath it? Crown chakra, spiritual power, third eye, mental power, uh, throat chakra, willpower, choices, decisions, uh, heart chakra, obviously emotional power. They've got the hermit in their work. What's going on uh, under that? behind, uh, within, behind the hermit crab shell on VH1, you've got the Six of Cups compassion. Talk about empathy. So look, I told you, my mother's a Cancerian sun sign. Deeply compassionate, but very together on the outside. <laughs> like you might not know that she's not mean, she's funny. Oh, I get my humor from her. Once you meet, once people meet my, my Cancerian mother, they're like, Oh, I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I am truly my mother's son in that sense. But Six of Cups is about emotional balance, not just giving um, compassion to others, but to yourself. Very heart chakra dominant. If you're going into some kind of meditation every day in your own home or similar, maybe it's your cubicle if that's, you know, because you can be in a room full of people and still have hermit archetype fully active and be aware of it, then this is about a lovely emotional balance. All right, I learned this from monks back in the 90s. The Ashaya monks, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. 
they said compassion is a pendulum swing. They're selfless and selfish. Well, the Samaritan is very selfless, but selfish compassion, that word selfish, there's higher selfish. It's self-care. It's giving you the, the compassion to say, I don't like this. And that's okay. You don't have to, just because you don't like something doesn't mean you're not spiritual. You're a spirit before you came into this body, if you recall. So that is often, like I said, it's a discernment. It's an intuitive hit, but it's got this conditioning around it, particularly if you've been dealing with the people for over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. So this is about being compassionate with you, but as a result in, in a hermitage uh, dealio, maybe not talking too much to the people around you, uh, but nonetheless understanding that you know, that's their pain. That has nothing to do with me anymore. I'm out of here soon, or whatever the case may be. Hermit is very much, I'm out of here. Screw you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> My goddess is three, please. For the networker in their career. What you got going on there, heart, th third eye crown. Particularly, this is heart, th third eye crown dominant. Excellent. Now you got a court card. Uh, you know, it's different in this deck. It's a matriarchal deck. So we're not doing kings and queens. We're doing maidens, mothers, and crones. This is the Libra card, the mother of uh, blades, which would be the king of swords. In traditional tarot, Skadi, she's a nice giant. Not a nice giant, although I heard she had her good days and bad like anybody else. Uh, but, and ice giant, think Loki. Oh, please don't make me think of that gorgeous man. Oh my god. I have a thing for British men. I'm just hoping it's just DNA. I mean, the food. Uh, this is very, very powerful. Very third eye, but also possibly because a networker, element of air, throat chakra, balancing it. Now, I'll tell you, Anatomy of the Spirit by Carolyn Mace broken up into chakra chapters. Brilliant. She even has a bit of her biography in the front of it. Her autobiography. Beautiful book. Huge book for me. Lined up the chakras with different religious spiritual systems and is amazing. Well, well, if you look at the Kabbalistic aspect of it, judgment and mercy, right, right in that throat chakra, uh, which are also essentially the two pillars on the side of the, the, the high priestess card in the tarot, the black one and the white one. No, that's not accidental. I did that. I'm high priestessing. Eh, get over it. Don't you misgender me. <laughs> I'm that. My pronouns are thee and thou. Thank you very much. I think we should all switch to that. Address the divinity of people. This is a Cancerian seventh house dynamic. Sure, there are other people involved here, but you're dealing with one-on-one -on -one relationships with seventh house, Libra, cardinal air, cardinal thought, creative thought, your cardinal water. So maybe as you're doing this hermit stuff, right, giving yourself the water here in, in your work, that here in your career, you're bringing yourself into a lovely mental emotional balance. Because seventh house is also your relationship to your shadow, the very attributes listed uh, on the bottom part of these cards. What are you going to say? <laughs> what are you going to put out into the world? Huh? Who are you networking with? And what? Uh, know what you want, but know why you want it more. Because the why is the engine. The what you want is the caboose. And on that note, my beloved goddesses of cancer, sign of water. Uh, <laughs> it's a very good read. My goddesses of water, sign of cancer. Powers of the West, please. The Samaritan in their eighth chakra dominant vocation, their calling, so powerful. Such a powerful divine family archetype. What's going on under that? Thank you, Fiona Morgan and Daughters of the Moon Tarot. You got the Four of Flames conflict. One dragon, two archers, focusing on each other so much they do not see that there's only one dragon. They think there's two sides to this. No, there is resolution available here, but you gotta, you gotta really look. What's the conflict? Well, I think the conflict is, is there are probably people that you sense in your work field, or maybe even your career, that are in pain and you're not so sure you want to help them. It's like they did me wrong. 
lie to me, whatever it may be, right? So there is a conflict. This is one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake. I think this is your leverage. It's not easy, but this is your leverage. So if you're doing shadow work, embracing the shadow, emotional healing, whatever, uh, as a result of your networking, get information. You know, there's rebirthing. There's all sorts of EFT, the emotional uh, emotional freedom techniques. So many different things that you know <laughs> our ancestors didn't have. Uh, uh, so we've inherited a lot of that stuff, and you know that can be a, a lot of this conflict that we're going through in terms of who you will help and who you would prefer to ignore. That says a whole lot. Now, these are the ones everybody wants, the lower three chakras. What's going on? Physical world. But if you know the causal factors in the upper chakras, then you can really work your leverage. So the mythic tarot, lower three chakras, outside looking in, inside looking out, masculine dynamic, yang dynamic, uh, uh, but also lower three chakras, root chakras, groups, tribes, well, like the Justice League, that's a, that's a tribe, right? Themyscira, there's another one, the Amazons, right? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I want to be, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> she's got good jewelry and great hair. I have a lot in common with Diana in that way. Let's see what hits the table. Second chakra, one-on-one -on -one relationship to another person or thing, money, sex, and power. But solar plexus is usually the key to these things. It's what you're going to do. It's your relationship to yourself in the world, your honor code, what you will, what you won't, what you do, what you don't, your gut intuition that no one else gets most of the time because it's your personal power uh, and the self-esteem to act on it or not. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. Very, very intense energy coming through here as I call upon my gods of water, the sign of cancer. Powers of the West for the masculine lower three chakra dynamic. Oh, humidity's back. Please, uh, three cards in clarity. Mythic Tarot for the Cancerian collective sun moon rising venus signs watching this video receiving this reading in their work they've got the hermit they've got the hermit uh with that six of cups on the inner really in their shell but probably very comfortable and if there is emotional process balancing healing something going on there which looks like could be the case as a result of the conflict in the libra in the middle that uh, there's some emotional balance going on there what does that look like on the outer Three of Wands, I'll wait. I'm going to get my loyalties and my priorities in order. Wonderful book. In the meantime, it's called by Ianla Van Zandt. You know Ianla. Ianla fixed my life. Blessed be, I love her. Uh, she says that what we are raised with, essentially, is uh, work first, right? Uh, uh, then friends and family, then self, then God, the divine, right? And it's now I lay me down to sleep, in my opinion, it's too fucking late. You got to do that shit in the morning, right? So do the divine God first, then you brush your teeth, get your shower, you know, do your warm-ups, Lil. Uh, uh, <laughs> then friends and family, which is what I do. I try and check, you know, social media, see if anybody's hair is on fire. And then, of course, poof, I do my day. It takes me about an hour or two. Because shower and stuff, that's work to get ready to be on camera. So this is a reprioritization. It would make sense that you're waiting for something that you're maybe not so ready to talk to everybody about. Like a new opportunity. Let's see what hits the table. Uh, my God's networker eighth chakra of their career with cardinal water uh, sorry cardinal air of libra the creative mind but also balance and balance just saw that right libra's the scales about balance and we got six emotional balance with that six of cups compassion so please what's going on lower three chakra dynamic in their career the emperor you're gonna call the shots or you're dealing with an authority figure in your career, uh, a communication thing. Either way, it's Zeus. I mean, Zeus is the emperor. And, you know, if there is a new opportunity on the table for you, then I would say this says that, yeah, your career right now might very well be in the lightning-wielding hands of an organization, right? The emperor isn't necessarily always a person. It can be a corporation. It can be a system, right? Like the government, something like that. You know what I mean? 
and that would certainly be tribal when it's major. When it's major arcana, it lower three chakras, it's all three. I would say that three of wands is definitely more solar plexus, right? Personally, what are your uh, the, your loyalties, Your what you're willing to wait for, what you're not? So, uh, you know, whether that's you, because chances are, you know, it's both, right? There's a mirror there. But that is about systems. Uh, it's the spirit king. Like, you take all the kings of the tarot, put them together, you get the emperor. So fire, earth, air, water, Zeus would be the spirit king, the emperor, holding the world in his hand and lightning in the other. So things could change at any second, but there is still a process to go through. Okay, my God, Samaritan. I, I should have known Zeus was going to be on the table. Uh, we got the Samaritan here in their eighth chakra, my gods with conflict, right? Do they want to ignore, to ignore or not to ignore? That apparently uh, is the question to help or not to help. But with the hermit, we have that similar through line. Please lower three chakras on this, please, for the Cancerian Collective. Well, I don't think you're going to be dealing with this for very long because you got the Eight of Wands. Everybody loves the Eight of Wands. Keep in mind, all tarot cards are neutral. It depends on the energy on them and what's laying around them. This is the Argo from Jason and the Argonauts that got the Golden Fleece. And we kind of knew. Spoiler. Uh, uh, right? They they went, that, that was at the six was victory. Uh, in this deck, uh, the Wands is Jason and the Argonauts, the uh, quest of the Golden Fleece. Um, the six is victory. The seven uh, is they got to make it back to the ship. And here's the eight. They're on their way home. And look, there's Flipper going the same direction as them. Yay! Keep going. Just watch out for the reef. <laughs> That's the nine of wands. Uh, so very cool. I don't think you're going to be in this position for two long. It does feel like fast messages are coming in. There's a lot of, there's always a lot of movement because it is balanced. Um, fire, different than the sixes, the eights are, are uh, a bit more about manifestation, things, momentum. All right, objects and motions tend to stay in motion, or is that inertia? I, I don't know them personally. So, uh, I would say fire dominant, right? What you want, uh, you hang in there. In other words, three wands, hang in there. Because in your vocation, this is your leverage, your spiritual power. Just take, while you're in hermitage, however you play that out, take a look at who would I rather ignore? Like, i got to tell you, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing, like, I looked a little bit here and there, but I never watched a full news segment on it, right? I was like, oh, whatever. My parents divorced when I was two. I'm like, I'm good. I know it wasn't a divorce, but you know what I mean? It's like, eh, whatever. Grew up with that. She married a divorce lawyer. <laughs> They're still together. It's a good thing. <laughs> Zeus and Hera. So, you know, this is very, very much that. This is uh, uh, your real ability to kind of see who you would rather ignore and take that that's where your leverage is. Feel the conflict. You don't got to act on it. You don't. Sometimes that is the thing. It's like, this isn't my dance anymore. But bless them. What did I learn from them? That's healing. All right, three more cards and we're done. I know it's a long one. But I chatted for like a good 45 minutes. Google her, Lillian Carter, Boston. Just do it, trust me. She's amazing. Her piece, Woman, unbelievable. I was there when it was inspired. Among other things. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. Last three cards down as I call <clears throat> to the Ascended Masters of a life purpose through the archetypal lenses of work, career, vocation, no bookie book readings. These readings are long enough. Please, three cards, the perfect healing mantra for the Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading. What is their perfect healing mantra to help them align that hermit in the eighth? Uh, Six of Cups on the inner, the Compassion's there behind the shell, and Three of Wands, they're kind of saying, well, how much, well, what, what do I want? You know, a, a solid foundation of, of the Three of Wands. They know what they want, but what are they willing to wait for and what aren't they? What are their loyalties there? Help them clear that up, the perfect healing mantra. Untangling neglect 
I take time to give myself all the approval I desire. It's a very powerful healing technique, but it takes a while. Right? You, lay, you know, it's like mirror work. You look in the mirror and say, you look beautiful today. And this voice inside of you says, eh. <laughs> right? That's okay. That's part of the healing process. Neglect is like a tangled web. It is like the Gordian knot. If you've been wanting more what? Approval on your work site. I could understand why a Cancerian would want to pull back and say, am I really appreciated here? And in their heart, they're like, I want more for me, right? I, being really compassionate with yourself. So the thing about their four ego wounds, abuse, neglect, codependence, and loss, according to Matt Kahn, his deck is in my hand, deck to E-C-K, uh, is in my hand. Uh, so kind of really tune into that. Well, uh, neglect is, is really hard to spot. It's so passive unless it's like neglecting to feed someone but someone not giving you the approval that you really earned, that doesn't mean they're right. That means that they're doing to you what was done to them. And they just don't know it. It's an automatic thing. It's with the nervous system, blah, 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 the shadow. Uh, this is definitely then saying, all right, well, I'm going to give it to myself. And I do it every day. And it took months for it to click because yeah, I'm a Virgo and I'm skeptical. I'm from New York, if you can't tell. So love this. Untangling neglect. I take the time to give myself all the approval I desire, which of course makes sense with that compassionate six of cups on the inner, three of wands on the outer, and the hermit. No one needs to know you're doing this. My Ascended Masters, the Ascended Masters, work career vocation in their career, the networker in the eighth creative family archetype in the creative intuitive uh, level of power. Libra on the inner, seventh house dynamic, cardinal water, uh, cardinal air, keep doing that, cancers are cardinal water. Libra, cardinal air, creative air on the inner, coming into balance, throat, eye, uh, throat and third eye, Delio, justice and mercy, oh, which would make sense with the emperor. They've probably got some lightning decisions to make, as well as probably dealing with external forces of, uh, uh, you, you, know, you know what I mean, administrations, right? Uh, corporations, or maybe ahead of something, right? A, a president, a boss. Please, what is that? Uh, what's the perfect healing mantra there? This feels really good. The perfect healing mantra? Unraveling codependency. Only I have to feel good about my choices. Third eye, throat chakra. Only I have to feel good about my choices. Now, what I find interesting is that you've got one ego wound here, neglect. You've got the other one, codependence. Now, look, maybe you've never been abused. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Maybe you've never been neglected. Maybe you haven't. I don't know how anybody escapes the codependent patterning on planet Earth, that wound, if you're in, I don't know, the Western Hemisphere at least, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's a form of addiction. It's destructive. Um, and it's where you hemorrhage your dreams and your energy so that somebody else doesn't get upset. That's one example, right? Codependency. Uh, so only I have to feel good about my choices. This is going to end up in your hands, which, by the way, definitely makes you more the emperor than not. We only have to feel good. The fourth one is loss, and no one escapes that one, right? Because the ego does not understand loss makes room for more gain, and gain then erodes and becomes loss. It's just how it works. I didn't write it that way. Believe me, I wouldn't have. I'm a hedonist. Vocation, shall we, you good Samaritan? <laughs> I'm sure the archangels just giggle when the witch goes uh, liturgical. Uh, the Samaritan in the Eighth Ascended Masters. Oh, it's got to be fun up there. They have a lovely cafe up there. They have alcoholic beverages as well as some lovely cappuccino from the original monks, actually. Uh, uh, the Samaritan in the Eighth. Inner conflict. Throat chakra. Spit swallow or chew. Uh, eight of wands. This is going to move fast. This is where their leverage is. So what is the perfect healing mantra so that they can really find and work that leverage in their vocation? Liberating love. I allow myself to receive all the fulfillment 
I'm willing to give. So that very much is uh, in alignment with untangling neglect. There is a definite symbolic resonance between your life path, uh, your your vocation, and uh, and your work. No question there. Particularly with the thing about giving help, right? Refusing to help others in need, or you know, would rather ignore them or exact, right? Exact something from them for the help that you do give. So to allow yourself to receive all the fulfillment you're willing to give with a hermit in your work, no one needs to know you're doing that. That's like extreme, cool, higher self-care, right? Uh, and really, I hate to put it in this, but I'm from New York, put it this way, you don't have to give a rat's ass, only you have to feel good uh, about your choices, but that's the thing, finding that balance within you to make what might very well be a lightning bolt kind of choice uh, as an emperor there. So to, to summarize, and then we'll do the blessing and all of that. In your work, you're untangling neglect. In your career, you're unraveling codependency. In your Samaritan, uh, in your Samaritan, in your vocation, you are liberating love. So what you got to do is allow yourself to receive all the fulfillment you're willing to give. Only you have to feel good about your choices and then take the time to give yourself all the approval you desire. Eighth to root chakra. So now let's do just that. I'm going to put it together in a blessing summary thingy and in the torch of Archangel Ariel. Look at this thing. Look at this. There's a lot going on here. I've had it forever. Um, and then we'll chit chat a little bit at the end if you want to stick around because the only way I have, the best way I've learned to let go of the collectives that I read for is to let the last 20 to 30 seconds be full out goofy. Just see what flies out of uh, my chakras, so to speak. One last time. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. As I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Cancerian collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading, may they be blessed with all that they need in their work, career, vocation, so they, as they bring that into alignment, this whole world benefits in so many ways unknown and hopefully some more known, that they are able to, in their vocation, refine their capacity to help those they would rather ignore, and there is certainly a conflict in there, something stuck in their craw, and that's okay. That's part of the journey. It's not much of a journey uh, without those kind of conflicts, otherwise, eh. It's boring. Uh, but with that Eight of Wands, there is fast movement here that this is definitely their leverage. And all they got to do is allow themselves to receive all the fulfillment they are willing to give in all of the different ways, right? So what parts of themselves would they rather ignore, right? To give that love, that care, that fulfillment to themselves. And sometimes that comes down to, I'm not doing this for all of you. I'm doing it for all. I'm doing it for all. The all uh, one that we are. I'm doing it for something way bigger. Uh, and certainly then in their career, uh, may they be blessed with a, uh, their ability to enhance unity through the sharing of information, engendering social awareness and empathy, which is so needed on the planet right now. But doing that perhaps even because it's Libra in a more social justice -y kind of way, right? In a way of it really being fair, really being balanced, but also, of course, there are relationships involved here. That second house, sorry, seventh house uh, Libra dynamic, one-on-one -on -one relationships. Doubt they're romantic, but you never know. It's a general read, and certainly now they really feel like they are the Zeus in this, the emperor. Really the one who's going to pull the trigger, although if they are doing a one-on-one -on -one thing with somebody else, it would make sense. If it was like, you know, an interview or or, you know, a collaborator or something like that, but only they have to feel good about their choices. They don't need to hemorrhage that power to anybody ever again, but certainly they need to take the time, <coughs> at least in terms of their work in the world. They need to hermit time. Uh-oh. 
uh oh, uh oh, uh, the light attribute. They need to seek solitude, help them seek solitude to focus intently on inner life, serving their personal creativity so that they can really embrace that six of cups, compassion inside of themselves, giving themselves uh, all the uh, approval they desire while perhaps overlooking not just their options, but what it is that they want and what it is that they don't. What is their what are their priorities? What is the most important thing to them? They have a nice solid foundation under them to do that now and certainly untangling neglect will reveal more and more of that just like untying the Gordian knot. I'm sure there was some stuff caught up in there that shouldn't have been in there. So may they be blessed with all of this pantheons the divine so they can bring their work career and vocation into fulfillment therefore fulfilling the next stage of their life purpose in this timeless read that they may heal, grow, learn, evolve, create, help, and heal for their well-being and for the well-being of all and with harm to none as we will it. So let it be done. So motivated. It was a long one, but it was like a crock pot. It needed time to come together. So did you like it? Well then like it. Hope the other crab cakes find this read. They may be in this situation stuck in their shells, right? And if you want more of me on YouTube, I don't know, if you're feeling it, subscribe. I mean, I'm worth it. I know what I'm talking about. I'm fun and I have amazing hair for my age. And uh, if you want more of me, if yes, I'm letting the goofy fly, but I'm really given some amazing ex exclusive content over on Patreon. I got humans, I got heroes, I've got angels, I've got uh, witches, I've got immortals, and I've got god goddesses there at the time of this recording. My subscription tiers and there's lots there for everybody and building a lovely community. Uh, and yeah, every day there's something. Every day there's something there and I'm loving it so much. Uh, so do check it out. Mm, I remember to make it disappear. <laughs> Progress. Uh, otherwise, seriously, if you want a private read, I've been doing these work, career, vocation readings with people for decades since I learned about work, career, vocation through the three levels of power. So there's a video in the description box. You know what it's called? It's called Booking a Reading with Mal. Explains it all for you, just like Clarissa. And if you know what that reference is, I am probably a good reader for you. Otherwise, wish you all the very best and the very blessed, my beloved crab cakes. Have at it, you Samaritan networker hermit. Hail, <laughs> farewell, and blessed, blessed be.